So Halo Infinite just had a major update and I've actually been hearing some positive things about it which is kind of surprising as operations haven't really been viewed that well for the last few months. Now I'm not going to rehash a lot of the talking points I brought up in my last video. That's what that video was for but if you guys want to see what it's all about check out that video. But you can see right here with the fleet comm operation that it does seem to be a rather sizable update right with new modes, a new operation pass, sandbox updates, which are rather significant, but nothing too crazy, honestly. It's not gonna be meta changing. Some forge updates, which are really nice. An interesting change to the exchange, but I definitely wanna talk about in this video, because we actually have some more details I actually can show you now about it, because they were oddly quiet about the whole thing. And then the shop, which is actually, there's an interesting change again with the shop I'm gonna to touch on later in this video as well. Also, if you guys like these type of videos, make sure to tap like and subscribe, you know, YouTube stuff, and let's get into it. Yeah, the big thing is like VIP and like, it's VIP, like, I don't know if anyone really cares that much about VIP, but if it's there. But for the premium version of this operation, you actually get a pretty sweet looking commando model, which actually might be kind of worth it. Yeah, I bought the last one, right, to have the classic assault rifle, so this might get my 500 credits, I'm just saying. And of course, this reach armor is just classic. But yeah, for the Operation Pass, if you buy into the 500 credits, you get this weapon model, which honestly looks pretty sweet. And you also get the camo that goes along with it. it looks like it's a cross core, gives you one kind of multi-use camo. You get the emblem at stage one, some Spartan points. You get a knee pad at stage five, some more Spartan points. And then they get the chest piece here, which actually looks like you can color that with this. Actually, really nice. That's actually a nice bit of customization right there at level 10. Some more Spartan points and then you get a little side pack right there as well at part 15. Then at 18 you get the shoulder pads there which you know not too shabby a little blocky a little basic but that's something there for you. Some more Spartan points and then I think the big thing people are really looking for is the operator helmet along with the attachment that comes along with it that really gives you that true Halo Rage Operator vibes. Now you may notice I've been standing for the last few of my videos. Well, that's because of this. I want to show you guys my setup, specifically my desk from FlexiSpot. They are the leading brand in the office furniture industry. And I recently got their E7 Plus sit-stand desk. For me, it's super important to have a desk like this because as someone who spends a lot of time at their computer, it's important for my health to have a mix of sitting and standing. Because we know extended periods of sitting can lead to many different health issues. And the great thing about the E7 Plus desk is that it has a greater height adjustment range from 26 inches to 51.6 inches. So as someone like myself who's six foot four, I need a desk that can reach my height and this desk definitely does that. There's a digital keypad that comes with the desk so you can adjust the height manually, but you can also have four different presets. The desk can hold plenty of weight as in this desk specifically can hold 540 pounds. And as a bonus, the keypad has a USB charging point allowing you to charge your mobile devices. And for your knowledge, there is a 30 day risk-free return policy for almost all FlexiSpot products. So I would highly suggest checking out the pinned comment to check out this desk and many others like it and other Flexi Spot products. Thanks for watching and let's get right back into those details. Now, like I said earlier in the video, 343 has implemented a really interesting change when it comes to the exchange and the shop. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. So once you go into the shop here, like I assumed previously, that you can actually get the haunted helmet as part of the shop as I predicted before, right? Comes with the whole armor set. It does look pretty cool, right? Doesn't have that blue flame, which I think kind of is necessary when it comes to this uh, haunted score. Right? To truly capture those Halo Reach vibes. But look at this though. This is really interesting because when you go to the exchange, you have that same helmet. The individual piece people are actually going to want of the armor set right there in the exchange. Well, for 75,000 credits. So it is going to be one heck of a grind to do so, but it's there. It's an opportunity for you to grind things that are within the shop in the game by just playing the game, which has been the biggest complaint when it comes to anything involving the shop for Halo Infinite. So I'm sure the big question now is, how long will it take me to grind 75,000 credits? Well, it involves your daily challenges a little bit now with the recent update. So like it always with the week ultimate completion, you get 1,000 Spartan points. There is another way for you to earn Spartan points by just playing the game beyond the operation pass. And yeah, you do get 250 Spartan points for completing one match per day. That's pretty standard stuff we've had previously, but things have changed now where your second match will get you 500 XP in third match onwards will get you 100 Spartan points 
per game. This is massive because previously they earned like those 30,000 credits, Spartan point options they had in the exchange. It was going to take you a week, a month and a half of daily grinding to just get 30,000 points. But now that's going to change things up a bit because now it depends on how much you want to play Halo Infinite. There is no hard cap. So if I look at my recent games here on Halo Waypoint, I was able to complete seven games within an hour. Now I normally like to play rank, so match times might be a little bit longer. Games tend to run a bit a little bit longer. So if you truly want to grind, play like SWAT or something, games tend to be a little bit faster there. So if you go seven games, times one hour that's 700 spartan points per hour that you earn but let's assume you play one hour per day right so we'll have to add in the extra 250 spartan points for your daily gameplay meaning you get 950 spartan points for your first hour of playing halo infinite so let's say you have three play sessions that are all one hour long each day right so that equates to 2850 spartan points for a typical week if you play three hours a week. That's 2,850 Spartan points if you play one hour for three days. And likely within that time frame, you'll complete your weekly ultimate, giving you 1,000 Spartan points as well, putting your average total to 3,850 Spartan points. Now let's times that by four, so you get a monthly idea. That's 15,400 for an entire month for casual play. So let's divide that by 75,000 Spartan points, meaning it's going to take you 4.8, if you want to round up, 9, effectively 5 months to be able to earn this. Now, if you're like a super hardcore grinder dude, right? You're playing every day for so many hours, I can't keep track of it. Yeah, it will be a lot faster for you. But I would say three separate days, each day being one hour, is pretty fair when it comes to a casual cadence of playing Halo Infinite. So this almost five months here, four and a half months, if you really want to grind four months, possibly to be able to earn your uh, one item within the exchange, which may even rotate out you don't even know still one heck of a grind that's one way to get people to carry it at the end of the stick for sure but at least it's a step in the right direction because halo players including myself have been asking for the ability to earn shop items by just playing the game it's a very common practice within most free-to-play shooters out there that you earn currency by just playing the game and you can use that currency within the shop which actually might encourage people to spend more money. It's like, oh, just an extra five bucks is all I need. Sure, I'll spend that money to then get an item I want in the shop. It's literally the best way to engage players with your content, right? Just like give them a carry at the stick of actual tangible money that you give them by just playing the game. That will raise retention rates. But I think having a retention of nearly five months right here that's going to be a little insane to think that like people are going to be willing to grind that much be that dedicated and hold on to your points to just get one item which is pretty cool but i still feel like it's a heck of a grind now that it's been a few months since the last reset 343 has gone ahead and reset all your ranks within the ranked modes of halo infinite so you're gonna go back in and do your five matches to get your placements all over again we have some changes come along with Rank Slayer now with this, with Cliffside Forest and Illusion. Uh, changes to Aquarius as well that are actually really nice with Overshield being at the top. Thruster has been moved to Old Overshield Spawn down in P1. Your CSR has definitely changed a little bit as well, where det the deterministic CSR payout is plus or minus 7. We'll now start at CSR 1700 down from 1800 and fire team limit raised from 1600 to 1700 so you'll have a little bit more leeway of getting more points to rank up a csr when it comes to onyx and also the bandit evo has had its fire rate slightly diminished a little bit so it won't kill enemies as fast with this update i mean also in fun side news if you want to call it that uh 343 did actually buff a lot of the weapons that were like the special weapons from the campaign that are actually more useful now than some of their vanilla counterparts but to me it's like well that's fun if you're playing like fiesta or husky raid but other than that, it's not like really like a meta shift or anything. And that's kind of my expectation for Halo Infinite updates moving forward, that nothing's really going to be making waves or anything, but some minor improvements here and there, they'll be like, oh, hey, that's nice. Now, I will say there is one bit of this update that actually kind of gets me a little excited, but it's more on the Forge side of things, and it's that music can now be queued up within Forge right here, as you can see an example of a player here. You hear that lovely Halo music, then transition to something a little more sinister right there. 
And that's something I think is really missing with a lot of these campaign missions that we get with uh, Halo Infinite's Forge mode and creators out there. So I'm assuming that we'll see a lot of updates when it comes to those. But again, we'll just have to wait and see until someone makes something pretty cool. But hey, Forge has been carrying this game for months now, so why not help support it? But my big thing with these updates is more about what can you do in the game now that you couldn't do previously. And yeah, well, pretty much the big thing is me playing VIPs. And I'm wondering, like, is VIP all it's meant to hype it up for me? It's only an 18 second delay when it comes to matchmaking, so people seem interested. So I really want to see, is VIP worth the wait? And my initial impression is going to be no, but I would like to be surprised. Oh, I'm going to get their VIP right here, right now. Watch this. Boom. There we go. Oh, he has a sword, but I have too much bullets. Ah, uh, you don't have the magnetic ability with that. So that makes it another easy kill. There has to be like some kind of indication while you're playing to let people know like, oh, you are the VIP when you are the VIP. Um, that's kind of a surprise that the guy's just AFK. I guess he's farming those Spartan points for the haunted helmet because it's it's a grind. Oh, let me get this guy, let me get this VIP. Oh no! So it looks like it's gonna be 10 eliminations to consider the round to end when it comes to playing VIP. For me though, VIP just wasn't really like a much of a mode that I really feel like I was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to play VIP. Because ultimately you're just kind of playing what you did before and that was just Team Slayer in Halo Infinite, but just with a little bit of a twist. Oh, I am the VIP. You can see on the screen, I'm like all fuzzy. Oh, they're all definitely very much after me right now too. Oh God, there it goes. <laughs> I was too busy talking about how I don't like playing VIP. And then I become the VIP and I didn't realize it until the last minute. It's really subtle. Not that, uh, not, I mean, I can definitely see like people, if you're not paying attention to the game, that like you could end up being the VIP and not even realize it. Oh, can I, can I, can I get him? Can I get him? No, <laughs> I was trying to get him with the ninja. <laughs> Oh, he did not like that attempt. <laughs> and I also feel like a mode like VIP should have been there at launch. Maybe just one of those modes that just took a while to get into the game because of all the, the trials and tribulations Infinite has gone through. The adding in such a casual mode like VIP just didn't really make a whole lot of sense when the game wasn't up to snuff. Oh, the last VIP is AFK. No, he's moving. Again, no scope on him. 360! Yeah, we still got the win. But yeah, you can see that watching that gameplay, it's really just kind of playing Team Slayer again, but just a little bit of variety mixed in with it. So overall with this update, I will say that the pass is pretty good. I like the armor set that comes with it. I think the uh, premium option is a pretty good addition as well. I'd say it's worth the 500 credits. It's been a long time since I've been able to say that. Uh, I also do really like what they did with the exchange, right? Adding in this uh, Ghost of Reach, right? The Haunted Helmet into Halo Infinite while at an extremely high price of 75,000 credits, it's going to take you quite some time to grind that out. It's still an option for you out there rather than just being tied to strictly just the shop, which is what we've seen for the first two and a half years of this game, which has been such a huge pain point of Halo Infinite when it comes to customization and the shop in general. And the fact that 343 has given you the option to buy individual armor pieces right here, which is pretty sweet. I like that. VIP really isn't much of a mode for me to go like, oh, I gotta play Halo Infinite. VIP's back, everybody. Now they could make some cool thing with like custom games or something like that with this mode now, but I mean, custom game browser, I mean, if we look at it here right now that like the custom game browser is not exactly uh, thriving as you know, it's this, this, the, these three sheets right here and a pretty small player counts mixed in with this and the organization and UI is just so rough with this as well. But if you made it this far into the video, I hope I earned your like and possibly a subscribe even. But yeah, I appreciate you guys coming by, hanging out and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.